video, I'm going to talk about how I harvest vermicompost. I have a very simple tubing system that is easy to manage, it's very affordable. And if you're interested in learning more about it, there is another video where I go more. In one side of the bin, I add fresh, which right here in the middle is a mesh divider. The role of this divider is to separate the fresh food scraps from the stuff that has already been worked on. As I continue to add more food scraps, I will only add food scraps to this side and as this breaks down, I will continue to move it to this side. So the key here is this divider because this is what allows worms to go, travel back and forth. I mean, this is mesh so it, it, they can very easily go through. So now the question is, how do you separate these worms? Once I see that the material already beginning to turn into uh, humus, I would eventually stop feeding the worms. And the moment you stop adding food to this section and you add fresh food to this area, they're gonna travel. And then as they travel, they leave this area behind with very few worms and then I just collect it. Um, now, another thing that I could do is I could take all of this material that is halfway there, put it in an entirely separate bin without a divider and then let it do its thing for another uh, six to eight weeks. And in order to extract the worms at that point, what I will do is I will put a little bit of food in one corner, preferably something like juice pulp or another material that will easily disintegrate and worms will naturally concentrate in that area and then I just grab it, remove it and place it in a bin that has food scraps. So that's what I do sometimes. I just empty this whole area, put it in a new bin and then to collect the worms, I just add a little bit of food, a little bit of juice pulp in one corner and, and then I keep transferring those worms into a bin that has food scraps. But One of the main differences between the regular thermophilic compost and vermicompost is that vermicompost is rich in enzymes. Enzymes are produced by microorganisms and composting worms. And that's the advantage of this is the amount of enzymes that are present here that will be beneficial to the garden. You cannot find that in regular compost because regular compost, a thermophilic pile, doesn't have the same enzymatic level and it doesn't have the same microbiology either. The diversity and the amount of microbiologies of microorganisms present is directly related or connected to the worms. So the worms make this compost material rich in enzymes which are really beneficial to the soil biology and they also make it richer in microorganisms. Now the key to keep the enzymes and the microorganisms present and active at a peak level is to keep feeding them. Which is the reason why I like leaves because leaves will continue to provide not only habitat but also food to microorganisms. Two options at this time. I can let them sit and they will continue to decompose. Probably it will take more or less two more months or I can add a second batch of food scraps to accelerate the decomposition process. And the way I do that is I use pulp from a juicer. I don't add bokashi, I don't add any coarse peels like pineapples. What I do is add a little bit of pulp to this section of the composting bin to accelerate the microbial life, to give it an enzymatic boost because those microbes will go crazy after the sugar in that material and they will create um, greater microbial activity and they will break down this material a lot faster. If you're getting value out of this video, please do me a favor. Please click like and subscribe and share this video with someone you may think will benefit from hearing this information. Because what I'm trying to do here is to inspire you to try new things in your warm system. Another way to harvest small amounts of vermicompost when you need just enough to water your houseplants or to make some compost tea is to put some in a strainer. This is actually one of my favorite ways to fertilize my houseplants. And then you're gonna sift it. And then as you sift it, the humus goes into the water and the material that has now been quite broken down 
you're able to put it back into your composting system. So this is a quick way, it's very effective to actually harvest some of the vermicompost right out of your system. I do this pretty much every time I'm going to water my houseplants during the winter months. So this is very exciting because I added food scraps here six weeks ago and the food scraps, you can tell, you can see these are all the eggshells that I pile on top of all of that really rough bokashi material and now all of that is pretty much gone. You see here I'm adding more material here so I get to move the divider to make more room because what I want to do is clear this area to add fresh food. I like adding some biochar to my food scraps because it's going to help neutralize the acidity. The acidity level of this material is pretty high because this is bokashi. So I use the eggshells and now I'm adding biochar to help neutralize that acidity level. If you're interested in learning more how you can use biochar and the benefits of biochar in your vermicompost system, please check out my other video, Worms and Biochar. I'll put a link in the description of the video and I also include it at the end.